This government meeting is brought to you by Eastworks and our local cable subscribers. Uh, good afternoon. It's um, Monday, January 30th at 4.30. This is the uh, um, Southampton Public Safety Building Committee, and I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, I guess the first thing on the agenda is open up any questions from the public or anybody from the public would like to speak. Uh, I'm Janet yes. Keene. I'm the chair of the Ad Hoc Senior Center Feasibility Committee. Okay. So I know we're still trying to maybe have a joint meeting on the 9th, so I kind of came to understand what you'd like us to have on the agenda and we'll publish our usual zoom meeting for on the 9th at noon so we'll get that out to, to you once i gave your address and stuff email address so but anyway I'd like to learn a little bit more about what you would all like to we can certainly give you an update and and arena's done a great job as liaison and cindy's come to some of our meetings so whatever we can do or whatever you want to accomplish that day to give me clarification would be helpful. Yeah. I think we're in the same boat. We're trying to figure out where the best way okay. to coordinate with you. Uh, we're both looking at sites and maybe it's a joint site, maybe not. Um, so we're trying to figure out how best to coordinate that effort. I think that's a primary reason we want to meet with you. Any other question? We'll probably go into detail later on as okay. we get into the yeah. meeting. Thank you. Um, Next, uh, I'd like to approve the meeting's minutes of January 9th. It's been a while since we've had a meeting. Before you do, uh, yes. Rini sent me some proposed edits of okay. the copy that you have before you, and so I'm going to just read the part. I'm sorry I didn't send you a second draft. Um, do you mind if I just read them, that you, what you sent me? Yes, I don't remember what you <laughs> said. <laughs> the, it, it has to do with the fifth bullet point down update from Ad Hoc Senior Center Feasibility Committee, and this is how Rini wishes, or proposes it read. Rini reported that on December 12, and she, let, and she crossed off several words after that, Abacus, the design firm, interviewed three property owners parentheses, Mr. Labrie, Mr. Gilleher, and an agent from Marmon Keystone, on parentheses, who have expressed interest in having their property considered for the site of the senior center. And then crossed off a, a few words at the end of that sentence. Next paragraph, an additional property owner, Mr. Coombs, who owns property on Clark Street, Correct. across from the Conant Park Fields, has emerged as interested in having his property considered. And the rest of it is unchanged per her proposal. So um, I believe those clarifications were uh, better represented what was said that day. What was the date that you read? Uh, this was the draft minutes of January 9th. The date of our the meeting with the 12th of December. It was the 29th. That was, oh. Hmm. It was the 29th? Okay. that they proceeded with their discussion. Okay, so is that okay, Rini, if we insert that yeah. on the 29th? Okay, so that's just one set of edits from Rini. I move the acceptance minutes as modified. I'll second it, unless somebody else already did. No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. And the minutes again. So what was that date? The 29th? 29. Yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't a posted meeting to the well it was it was it wasn't a it did end up being a meeting of the committee. But because they had already secured the landowners, uh Abacus interviewed them while the committee uh, members listened in, but we didn't deliberate or Make any votes. Yeah. So I just wanted that to be clear that because I'm glad you did. Yeah. yeah. Well, you didn't say anything about no deliberation or anything. You just right, right, said right. what I happened. Just, yeah. Um, I guess we're looking for an update from the senior center. What's the well, current status? Well, we have the chair here, so I'll give an update unless you I'll want. Over to her. Now, now, go over to her. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Okay, so we had a Zoom meeting uh, last week, 
And Abacus gave a report on the, uh, before that, why don't I just pass these around? I thought it might be helpful. It's not 100% accurate, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But um, it just might be helpful for you all to have an actual printout of this. So Abacus uh, hired an engineer to do some studies of the proposed properties that are still in consideration. And so we they went through and just gave some feedback around the different properties and also, um, you know, they're in the process of refining both the design of the center and also site um, information and also where in the site with eventually, uh, we're seeing many different schematic um, uh, architectural designs and so forth. So it's moving right along. They're on target to actually um, have a, a report in March. On March 1st, there is a uh, community event at North School. I think it's 7 o'clock. And that will be hopefully very well attended where Abacus will actually share the PowerPoint and the work uh, done that this, thus far. We've been communicating with Amanda Zadonis Kemp, who's the attorney who's overseeing the will, um, and so we're kind of getting closer and closer to an identifying a particular site um, and design of the center. So that's kind of where we're at. So this, this little handout, you know, I just wanted to, you know, see this. The reason why I said it's not entirely accurate is because we have not voted to remove the current highway department. We talked about it, but it would have meant delaying it going back to the select board for approval, and the RFQ was already written, so we decided to just send it out as is. Uh, we can change that if we want to, but I just wanted you to see what's what was been what has been reviewed by the committee for sites, which been officially voted on to be removed, and where we're left, and where we're left is the exact same four sites. <laughs> so I wanted you to see this. Uh, the senior center had evaluated a few more because of things that came up, particularly the Harley Davidson place. But um, anyway, that's where it stands. What else, Janet? Did you want to add anything? Um, I, I, we're working through a, a way to score and stack rank the properties. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the next step on the, on the, on the list so that we can narrow it down to a, a systematic way of saying this is property one, two, and three, and then we'll probably vote on, uh, take, take a motion and a vote on that sometime in March. Mm -hmm. Now is oh excuse me. Is Abacus also ranking them? How is that working? That's, we're using their um, mechanism. We've got some creative mechanism um, based on the feedback they've gotten from all of us, basically, and from the civil engineers and that they've gotten themselves to, to um, rank them in different various different categories. I don't I don't remember all the categories. We just saw it briefly the other day last week. And there's a number of different you know. 10 to 15 different categories that we rank, you know, kind of green, yellow, red, and then probably score them one, two, three, and then we'll try to come up with a very systematic, quantitative um, measurement to select the top property. But just out of curiosity, uh, you're up against a deadline. Are you able to be able to meet that deadline? Yeah, I think we'll have this, this done sometime in, by the end of March. Um, the deadline is May 17th. So I don't see any reason for us not to be able to make that deadline. To have a study complete and presented to the state of Mr. Parsons. So. Well, you said you were in touch with Amanda um, Zanonis Kemp, but I can't recall what you said she said. Was that just to be clear that you're on target for? Yeah, we just wanted to get show her, share with her the latest documents from Abacus and to see if there were any red flags that she could see, but there weren't, a, a, you know, that she was on target. Okay, I'm just doing the minutes. That's okay. yeah, thank you. So she wasn't the attorney who originally met with Ms. Parsons, um, okay. but so she ended up taking over that, and so we had a meeting early on with her, the committee, uh, to determine or to clarify what do you mean by final plan? What does that look like? What is it? what would mean that we'd actually been able to read the letter of the will. And um, so that was very helpful. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to have land purchase. We don't have to, you know, have any shovels in the ground or anything, but we do have to have a final plan, which we interpreted as a design and a site. 
or two. Right. I mean, yeah. for, for, we don't have to buy the site. Yeah. We don't have $2.5 million until they approve it, so we don't have money to buy anything. But it's just to get be able to get the funding that was designated in the will. And the other thing I mentioned last time is there was also a survey monkey that was done uh, in addition to that uh, on-site meeting that happened in the senior center where about 70 people came to, and there was a survey that was done and you know a good number of people yeah, about 300 people responded, people responded to, that, to the so. survey so we have a lot of good information about what people want and what people want is um, not their taxes to go up. <laughs> that was listed on the uh, survey, though. <laughs> we have, we have um, had a meeting with a, um, a fundraiser to, to see just one. We're looking, talking to probably a couple different ones to see what we can do to raise capital um, to avoid any kind of, as much as we can, any substantial increase in taxes. So between the fundraiser and the monies, um, you know, we just try to collect as much non-tax revenue as we can. But that's, that'll take place. <laughs> Once we know we have the 2.5 million, we can't really do anything um, Southampton works hard to get every grant it possibly can. Is there any, has that been looked into as to whether there's any potential for grants yeah, that would also... Closer, we will. I mean, if anybody reads again, is that any more the two $2 million dollars from the federal government for Worthington. So we'll be looking at various grant opportunities as well. That was federal, came from, you know, that was federal. Okay. Kind of deal. Yeah. And uh, Senator Real Estate helped secure $50,000 of ARPA money for the senior center, and then uh, a little subcommittee had identified three possibilities for the funding. One was an outreach worker, another one was. Um, you know, social, cultural programs, trips, they seem to be very popular. And then the third one was to consider what would it cost to actually hire a fundraiser, knowing that we we're going to need a pretty significant capital campaign. So we entertained uh, just an informal discussion with a company called Rainmaker. And it was really very impressive, actually. So we're just kind of thinking ahead and... Did you say that was Senator Neal that helped get that? The Senator Neal helped get the grant for Worthington. Oh, who Senator Bielis. Bielis, sorry. Uh, okay. Helped sorry. get the fifty thousand dollars for the ARPA for the senior center. Okay. So I really do think that as far as a joint meeting, I mean, we have to we have to be on the same page. You know, we have to make sure that those public sees that you know we're going hand in hand in this. Um, <laughs> There's, there were some comments on the survey about uh, the senior center survey saying that uh, the town really needs a public safety complex. So it's pretty clear to um, us that we have to be kind of on the same page about what we're going to do going forward. And I don't think there's anybody on the feasibility committee that disagrees how much yep. we need a public safety complex. Right, so, right. Um, absolutely. Yep. I mean, we kind of got into this position because of the will. It wasn't yeah. like we decided let's go compete for the same money as the public safety complex. It just, I mean, was just there, and we hopefully um, support each other as much as we can. Mm -hmm. So we'll so, come on March 1st and hear our story. And if anybody wants to speak, and you know, and we just mention the public safety that we're in sync. I mean, that's critical that we. So, Janet, has it come up in discussion at all? Should, and I don't have any idea if this would happen, but should there be a determination that this could all be a complex, which included police, fire, as well as senior center, all in the same complex? How would that impact this two and a half million dollars for the will, or has that never come up for discussion? specifically stated to build a standalone senior center. Two and a half million dollars has been specifically designated in his words, in Mr. Parsons' words, for a standalone senior center. Has to be standalone, gotcha. Okay. I mean, that doesn't mean they can't be on the same particle of land, you know, right. but the monies is designated for, for by him for that. I gotcha, okay. I just think that might be a question that might come up from the public. You yeah. know, can we, we can there be an economy of, uh, you know, yeah, not scale in order will. to We don't have okay. any control over how he wrote his will and what his wishes were. Sure. So.
I think we just have to be clear because I think whenever you take money off the tax rolls, there are going to be the only audience that are going to ask that question. So I think that if uh, if we're not considering the current fire station, I, I think that this, my understanding is the current fire station site not only would it displace the fire department, but it also would require a two-level senior center. That's the only way that the senior center will fit on that site. And it's also the parking that's the largest. The parking, yeah. And mm -hmm. also the outdoor space. That right, right. So I think well, the parking is a big issue with the closeness. I mean, the yeah. open activities and thinking wouldn't be to support the parking, but we're not to that point yet. So. Right. So even though these places might be crossed off or might even eventually be crossed off, they will still be addressed as to uh, the reason why. That's why they're scoring. They're scoring it, yeah. and you know the engineering studies are pointing to problems with certain places and such. What's the recommended acreage that they're asking for? I think what they just came with the mandate sort of is with the square footage that they're looking at, which is between ten and twelve thousand square feet. I think it's close to four acres are required by bylaws support that size and square footage you would need about that. How many and acres? Parking. Repeat that. How many acres? I, I, it's around four. <coughs> four acres. Really. Yeah, I mean, it's in the last study. I'd have to go get the exact detail. That came out from the engineers when they responded. And we're looking for three acres for the public safety complex? Yeah, well. I don't know, what it's I don't know if we've gotten there yet, but I think it has to do also with handicap parking, don't forget, which would have to be quite a lot. In fact, I just reviewed that one. <laughs> if it's between 40 and 100. Anyway. I mean, we started with okay. two to three acres, but I mean, once the engineers came back and sort of reviewed the... I, I'm not being critical. No, I'm, just, yeah, I'm I mean, just thinking about... Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Saying, how did you come up with three acres? You know, because yeah. we started out smaller, but that's... Yeah, I don't know. I think square footage too. I mean, we, I think we originally talked about ten when we looked at you know what we had suggested as far as rooms and sites and what people said they wanted. It ended up being closer to twelve. Yeah. Thinking to, also in terms of population growth projections and things like that. So, but and we're very aware good. that every increase in square footage is increasing cost. And they were at fifteen, and we said no. we got to scale that back. Yeah. I have a feeling. That we're going to have a bigger population growth in the seniors than we're going to in the yeah, schools. Yeah, we are. The schools are going to start lagging more and more behind. Well, this year we just got a presentation from the schools, and actually the numbers were up this year, but last year they were down. So I think it, you're right. I think it, the trend will be that. Yeah. Anyway. So I don't know if you, if there's anything else in terms of like the meeting on the 9th you want to talk about? Or um, I just think it's good to get conversation about how we're going to coordinate the two design architects. Yeah. Have them work together and separately at the same time is going to be an issue. And I don't have the answer for it. I don't know if we want to spend the time now or talk to the entire senior city committee trying to work out those details. Well, I, I need to know whether to invite the, our advocates later on. You know, I mean, how much time do you see taking on that part of the meeting? You know, we can have them listen in. It doesn't matter in the way coming to them and just being respectful of their time. Because I don't know what architect will be working with when you guys have your RT and the ready to roll. So. I anticipate most of our conversation is going to be generating a list of questions <coughs> that uh, can be answered. I don't know if we can answer the questions at the meeting. That's my assumption. Because so, we'll have other agenda items, so we'll start with you guys at noon. And then when we wrap up, we'll move into our agenda. And you're, and you're welcome also. I mean, usually they are working from that PowerPoint that keeps getting sort of refined, so you'll learn a lot by simply seeing where you're welcome to stay, for sure. Yeah. I will say I did sit in on a couple public safety, uh, I mean, sorry, senior center uh, meetings and found the, po the presentation to be really helpful to somebody like me. It was just very good. So if during our joint meeting we could stay and look at this evolving PowerPoint that mm -hmm. Abacus has created. It, it helped me a great deal to understand what they're dealing with and mm -hmm. stimulated thinking on my part. Mm -hmm. um, did, you, did you say at one point that Abacus ha doesn't do public safety buildings? Correct. 
because it seems to me it'll be impossible, but it would be a home run if there would be the same organization creating it. It's not possible because yeah, they already have theirs because um, mm -hmm. to understand a community like ours, and, and I was impressed by all the information the engineers cr you know, got around all the different potential sites in town, what, what works in terms of environmental issues, what works in terms of um, size, and um, many, many factors that were mm -hmm. just brought out in that meeting that, you know, I was trying to... A lot to of your work done for you by the time you're there. Oh, good. Well, yeah. exactly. Yeah, great. Great. A lot of it that occurred to me, Janet. Yeah. yeah. So. I think with each um, meeting, you know, when they interviewed the landowners, they learned more, they updated the, you know, all the information. As they've shown designs of the actual senior center, getting more feedback, they refine the actual building, what it looks like. So it's um, it's really coming along, and March is right around the corner. So they're getting close to um, being done. Yeah. Just going and on what you just said about the uh, information already being available. We're looking selfishly on our committee. Uh, our uh, future architect is, needs to do an analysis of all these properties, and I'm wondering if that may be a factor that's slowing down that response to us. And if we can have yours available. I don't know if that's something that's legally able to be done by advocates or not, that we can make your studies already available where you have them do it twice. It's actually owned by the town of Southampton. Yeah. Okay. We, we the study is study. owned by the town of Southampton. Yeah, the study's paid for us. Okay. And then, I don't post it every two weeks because they mm -hmm. updated a little bit, but there is on my town above under our, uh, I think a couple weeks ago I posted one of their presentations and it gets updated every two weeks. So if you want to take a glance through it. Or it's worth it. It's, yeah. I think for the meeting on the 9th, it might just be helpful for you to just give an update to the Senior Center Committee on where, you know, what our process has been up till now and what some of the roadblocks have been. And then have a discussion about what we can do to generate public uh, unison and also support for the, uh, these projects, both of them, because the, the public meeting will be March and I think it's going to be pretty well attended. So I think um, those are the two things I think would be helpful. I mean, getting an update from, giving the, their committee an update, and but then also really talk about public support. Because ultimately, we're gonna rely on the public supporting these projects. And apropos to what you said, Charlie, I, I agree with you that um, the way the demographics are going, there will be more seniors versus mm -hmm younger people under the age of senior. And yeah, I don't think people realize what the senior center could provide to somebody that isn't currently going there right now. It's because it's, you know, like me, I don't go there for any reason at all other than to go to meetings. Um, but yet, if it had more things, I might do that because I certainly fall into the senior category and I think that's part of what has to be answered. Um, In my understanding, I'm not sure, but I'm sure the chiefs would be able to answer this. Then, uh, the majority of people that access your services are seniors. 75% of our call right. are EMS. Wow, that's a great right. point. So that is <coughs> important. Not necessarily, I don't know the percentage, but not necessarily the same for us. Right, right, right. I think for uh, EMS it would definitely be. No, seriously, <laughs> seniors aren't running around doing crimes. No. Force feeding and things like that. They know how to get away with it. We ain't going to see seniors. <laughs> No, when you show off, you're usually the, you know, your first responder. Yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. a lot of your time is spent. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. But but they're mostly yeah. EMS calls, John. Seventy-five percent of our EMS calls are. Oh, it's EMS calls. It's not fire calls. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Rini, after the interviews with the landowners, did Atticus provide you with any results of that? No, I they think they shared with us at the next meeting, and then we all kind of joined in. Their comments, and I think it just helped them to better, you know, get a sense of how much flexibility the landowners I think were offering yeah. to them, and yeah. I think they felt everybody sort of embraced the concept, and whether it's both senior and public safety, and you know, I think that they saw, I think, from the landowners, a lot of willingness to work with them. Yeah, the information changed though. Like after they talked to the representative from Marmon Keystone, we were originally told what two million. Well, it's like 1.7 and it changed. I think it's 1.1 in the Okay, yeah, they haven't obviously sold it. But it was a L-shaped lot, you know, they were just trying to get rid of whatever they could. And then the, by the time after they interviewed him again, it was like, well, we would consider not selling that L if it's going to just add a price tag. And then with the Gillaher property, 
I think their schematic design had a road going in a certain way, and then after talking to Ryan, I think his, he had a different kind of suggestion, so they're like, okay, well, we can just flip the building then, or whatever. So, I mean, it, it was definitely helpful. Everything, you know, keeps getting more focused. Yeah, I mean, if they had certain restrictions, you know, like with Ryan, he wants to get back to his property in the back, so mm -hmm. he wanted a, a roadway to go through, and where Epicus might have placed it, they may have had, Ryan may have had a different suggestion on what would work better, and so yeah, those were all, so that's kind of the, the communication that yeah. was on them. And the same thing with the engineering information, it was really, really helpful. So they have a chart, it said with like, they're going to make it numerical, right now it's like red, green, yellow, and um, so it just keeps getting more and more focused. Well, good. So I just want to say that, that when we had the public meeting with the 70 people there, um, I was helping with some of the stickies that the abacus asked questions of the people that were there. And I felt like there were a lot of questions about money. And so I, um, I feel like we should just be prepared uh, in any public forum you know, I mean, what I've been saying all along is, you know, obviously we're going to have a major capital campaign. We're going to try to seek out state and federal funding, um, and we're going to work together. So I think that's a good message. Yeah, as, as um, David said from Atticus, you know, this meeting is like our time to tell a story. So it's creating a storyboard, which includes a lot of this information, you know, so that we get it clear, clearly communicated. And whoever watches it on TV because it'll be broadcasted, not live, but recorded. I don't know if it'd be brought live or not. We got we got to work out those details. But. Okay, I guess we'll move on to the uh, so, exciting. So, so are you saying that you're going to? Who's going to create the Zoom link? I, I'll use our usual Zoom link. So it'll okay. be posted on. I've already put up, we have a joint meeting with you. Okay. Um, you'll have to post that you have a joint meeting with us. You can always say, see okay. our agenda for the Zoom link. And, and then you can just cut and paste the Zoom link if you want to. Um, okay. Yeah. Or copy and paste. Yeah. We'll copy and paste. Sure the say. correct Zoom link. You've been doing much better. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that means a lot, Ed, thanks. <laughs> it's tricky, you know, a lot of like board assessors have the same thing with like, your holidays. It doesn't count on the 48 hours, so they no. have to have a... Weekends and holidays. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But actually, you know... Fridays. And, and Fridays do, though. And I'm, I'm going to stick up for Janet because I know how many different committees she's involved with in getting Zoom links for them, and I know how many I'm involved with, and yes, every once in a while uh, it gets confusing. So, yeah. yeah. It does happen. It's about being human or something. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So that's on the February 9th. And that's February noon, night. right? Noon. Yes, noon. Yep. February 9th. Right? Noon. And I'm reading can send it off. So once I get it, the, the agenda posted, you can send it off to everybody here to this committee if they need. I think Mark will probably. I mean, so whatever I communicate with you and. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll post it on me. Okay. It'll be on my account, but I'll put the link up. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. Thanks, Janet. And now we have the announcement from Ed. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. And no, we did not receive any RFQ responses. But we did have a vendor who was kind enough to reach out to me after the fact, and I think I have a much better understanding of why we did not get any responses uh, at this point. And then I'm also going to regress a little bit, and Cindy <coughs> asked a question a little while ago uh, about what happens if the two committees would like to put both facilities on the same property. I think it can happen, it would have to happen in a very specific way to break out the, uh, shall we say, what any land costs were for the two facilities. Uh, but I'm also going to say, in my estimation, there are only two properties on the list that would be of adequate size 
to have both facilities on them, and that would be 79 Clark Street and Zero College Highway. <coughs> And at, that would be adequate size for both everybody to be together. For, yeah. 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 Okay. for a kid, for both of them. So Or theoretically 79 and 80 next to each other and not buying more than we need. 79 and 80. I'd probably lean towards 79. You mean 89 and the yeah. 79. Because, because of the 21E, I'd probably lean towards 79. That's just my take on it. And, and for multiple. Yeah. yeah. So if everybody's ready for culture or sticker shock, this particular vendor actually went through the tasks in the RFP and added them up of what they thought they would want if they got awarded the contract. That was $200,000. So we not offer 75. not to exceed 75. They're saying 200. Uh, like I say, that kind of ticks the biggest piece off of why nobody's responsive. There seems to be a different, shall we say, a gap of what we've asked for and what the actual cost was. So uh, the particular vendor actually went through it uh, and just made some comments. Uh, and actually, actually one, of, one of the comments that I've added at the end was my, mine in the end, but I would have still had culture shock and it come back in. Uh, at somewhere around 200,000, and that was to when we did go out again to rather than set a fee of not to exceed, to actually leave it open for mm -hmm. uh, fee fee open to be open to negotiation. So with that at the end, but here's some comments the vendor had uh, had made to me uh, on how the committee might consider adjusting that RFQ to bring the cost uh, down somewhat. And we have the $75,000 from ARPA. Uh, we do have, well, we still have to get it from the state, but we've been awarded $50,000 from the state. So really we have $125,000 to uh, work with at this particular time. So here, here are their comments. Uh, Reducing the number of sites under consideration. Uh, there are a lot of civil and site design fees associated with researching the feasibility of so many sites, especially if one is being donated, or alternatively cover the 21E reports yourself by hiring your own consultant through the town. Uh, those reports are typically done by specialty environmental consultants. You know, if we were to hire someone on our own, we'd still have to pay for it, so keep that in the back of our our minds, you know, one suggestion may be on some of these reports that we don't require it from all, and maybe when you get to, we get down to maybe what looks like two of not knowing that information, and then you know doing them either on our own or um, through the successful vendor, uh, just on those two parcels instead of a couple of parcels. Uh, the 20-year projected operating cost is difficult to do. As discussed, if you were to cut that down to one year and specify only mechanical, electrical, plumbing costs, then it's less of a risk, risk for respondents. And you know, to meet the um, capital requirements for that, I am comfortable with doing one year rather than uh, you know 20. If, if we know what those, uh, shall we say, physical, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, or just utility costs are, we can pretty much figure out what they might do in the future, too. Um, there are also a lot of meetings involved in the process. If the committee feels that those meetings requirements need to stay, there's a lot of fee up by those meetings that could be spent compiling information and designing. Uh, vendor was unsure when model was mentioned, whether it was a physical model or a digital model. A physical model will cost more money to put together. A digital model will be produced by most design firms throughout the process by putting that schematic design together. So we may just want to clarify that. And uh, for their two cents worth, uh, it's, they said it was worth keeping that schematic design element in the RFQ uh, with all the variables involved to have schematic design in there, uh, they believe is valuable. So how many sites were um, 
in the original RFQ. <coughs> I, according to this, I think it, there was only five. There's five. Right. five. We said That's up right. to five, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, five. And how many meetings were there? That I don't recall. So, so I've got quite a few. I, I think it was open ended, was it? No, I think we had a number. Comprehensive final reports that give up to three presentations, including the town meeting. Should also anticipate attending an additional town meeting, a minimum of five meetings. So, so it's eight meetings basically. It doesn't seem. It doesn't seem a lot. I compared mean, to what Abbas, Abacus has done, I think they've already met eight times. Exactly. Including two site visits so far. Most of it's Zoom, but still. <coughs> May I ask a question? Yes, Charlie. Reduce the number of sites. Do we, as a committee, have the authority to bring this down to, like, two sites? Or do we have to run this by the select board? Well, I think we do, because this is why we didn't vote off the, um, the other site, that the Coombs property there. Or, no, I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, the current highway department. Highway. Because we wanted to get the RFQ right out, and the select board wasn't meeting for quite a while. However, I'm, a, I'm, I'm of the mindset that I believe we have enough rationalization to ask the select board to allow us to remove that site because of the fact that if that site was chosen, all we're doing is probably adding another five or six million dollars at least project. Mm -hmm. to, to going forward to what is already two, we already know that the town does not have a lot of money available to do these. Uh, in, in my mind, that is, shall we say, a serious barrier to enter uh, on the utilization of that particular property. So uh, I think I would hope that the select board would allow us to at least remove that one, which at least gets it down to four. I have the, the draft that you and I had worked on, and so I'm happy to make some changes on this. I think that we did create or we did add an agenda item tomorrow with an update from this committee. Yes. So, I mean, I'm fine with removing the 20-year projected operating cost. I mean, I do think uh, having that one year, because people are going to ask, <coughs> what will the, you know, if we have a brand new building and it's so much bigger, what will be the maintenance cost? But that's not something in the senior center one, is it? Yeah. Doesn't the capital committee require that? It does. When it comes time for approval and yeah, so uh, just one year. It may be in the next well, round for the senior. Yeah. This isn't the building. Yeah. Committee. Yeah. This is a piece of building. Uh, and to say that when you eventually get to the capital committee looking for their endorsement, right? Well, right. after the money, I, I think it's one year also. One year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is, so is it worth removing it entirely and send someone to the senior center when we get to the next step after the feasibility, like the building committee? That would be the time to actually I'd look like at. To keep it in here, you want to keep it in it for one year? Yeah. Everybody. I. One year so. Do you remember where that was on the thing? Yeah. What's that? I'm just going to cross out uh, mm -hmm. where we had made reference to it. I'm just wondering if, any, if anybody has a quick idea of where it is in this. I could read what it says and see what, how you want to edit it. <coughs> yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure what else it says. All right, so there's quite a bit here. It says actually. It's on page eight. Oh, Task five. Task five. Evaluate the cost to operate a new public safety facility, including heating, cooling, water, and electricity. Also evaluate maintenance maintenance cost, including cost including maintenance staff. And I would probably remove anything that would try to establish either 
operating staff costs and maintenance staff costs. Okay, so just remove that sentence entirely? And well, then, maintenance costs and maintenance costs. The second sentence is deliverables. That's where it talks about the 20-year cost yeah. analysis. So I'll just say the deliverable will be cost to operate the facility, including heating, cooling, water, electricity? Mm -hmm. For one year. For one year. That'll give us all four seasons. And then, did they mention anything about the option for green design? Because that was added. They did not. Is that something we want to skip? Is that something that's done on the same center side? I don't think it's specific in there. Okay. Again, again our, our goal is to secure the funding, so our feasibility study is a little bit different. Yeah. But we don't have enough space for sure. There. I just think if we ask about the green stuff, then it makes us more inclined to take and get grants from that. Yeah. Right. And right. It's, it's just a question of do you do it up front in the feasibility study or do you wait for the actual design? Yeah. Where do you think the okay. questions may arise <laughs> if we're trying to get to a estimated <coughs> land cost and building cost combined in the feasibility study is a designing green wise probably would have an impact on that. Okay. Do you want to go through and look at dates and changes or do you want to proceed? Well, we need to proceed. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would say, you know, let, let the committee decide on what changes there they would like to see in here. And much like last time authorized, you, Rini, and myself to make those changes. Uh, and then put it back out. And what I'm kind of hoping for tomorrow night is that at least three members of the select board may be kind enough to vote for a motion that even without seeing those changes with our summary would allow us to move forward and make those edits and put it out without them seeing the final. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to, about. I mean, I'm not talking about massive changes. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to um, do something like this where I highlight in red and send yeah. it out to people. Yeah. And then, like I say, we, then, could, we could bring it forward that yeah. I'm going to make, if there I would allow it, I will make the appropriate date changes. Okay. But there, there's a couple more things, though, in terms of uh, some other points you make here. One is, um, are we looking for a physical model versus a digital model? Digital is. Is digital, so that has to go in there. Just clarify. Clarify just digital. Yeah. So it's a digital model. I've never ever seen one. Yeah. It's been years. Yeah. I was at, in the city of Boston a couple of years ago, and they had this massive three-dimensional model yeah. of the way the city was going to look. I don't think we're looking for that. I don't think we're there. <laughs> no. Um, but the other thing is meetings. Um, we do need to have meetings. Yeah, yeah. But why don't we clarify that many of those meetings could be Zoom, except when presenting a town meeting. Uh, that would certainly cut down on the travel costs and um, maybe be more time efficient as well, if it's Zoom. Can, like they, yeah. can they put that in there, too? I would agree with that. Yeah. You know, we're, we're only reducing the highway this number of sites because I'm actually, I really encourage you. I think if we can, we're going to end up looking at the combine, combine both of these projects and maybe we need to look at like bringing this down to, where is that list? Maybe take the current fire station off the list. Uh, 79 Clark Street, maybe 89 Clark Street, maybe zero College Highway to focus on that. I don't think we can take the current fire station no. off. And I'll tell you what, I do think the public is going to say, what are you doing with this site? Now, there might be rationale for removing it, but I don't think we can do that. That's my, my opinion. Yeah, it would, it would actually be the only town on the site left then. And the charge for our committee is priority to town only. Yeah. 
And it may not be together. I mean, it could be one on Clark and one on college. I mean, we yeah. have to keep all the options open. I think we have to do due diligence in looking at all of the environmental engineering and other factors and decide what's in the best interest of the voters and stand behind all the decision making. Mm -hmm. I, I also think if we removed it, and it ultimately may be removed, and I understand that, mm -hmm. people are going to say, what are you going to do with this? What is this? What's going to happen to this current fire station? Is that... Let's just give you the new house of the town administrator. Gotcha. We're required to well, we, we can work on that, Charles. But no, seriously, I think that those are the kinds of questions that I, as a member of, public, of the public, don't want to know. So we talking about just taking from five down to four, just an elimination of the highway department. And I think maybe we should put something in there about there's currently current data that exists for all current sites mm -hmm. that is available. Right. Yeah. 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 That's okay. good idea. No, I think we need to good. say that. But but it, for, how do you, how do you want environmental to and engineering. Oh, current data access. Right, from the senior center. Right. I would probably have to say this is current data through the project, so they're not right. going to look at the world. Right. Are we changing any of the submission requirements? We had loosened it up last time in terms of um, the designer and the various architects and whatever. I don't know that we can go down from there much. It sounds like it was really about the money and if the, yeah. on the things that added, made it more money. Right. right. That would concur. So we'll just leave all that. You and I can talk about the dates, yep. whatever you think is reasonable. Is there yeah. any other source of money to increase it? Well, the only ready available money would be ARPA. And so, I was, because right now we have $125,000. And I think it would be better to, for me, to mention that to the select board, um, that we're requesting encumbering of up to, two, uh, up to an additional 75000 It might be less depending on the bids, yeah, but I think I know that in the past when um, money was requested for things and we didn't have a firm number, then they said wait until there's a firm number. But Yeah, and I, like I say, I, I would, at that point I would probably wait until we actually had the responses and we're go, uh, going through the, uh, getting to the point of going through the uh, interview process with two or three of them and right. then get into the negotiation, because we'll, then we'll know. With the RFQs, are we able to, it's not, even though it's sort of going out to bid, we're not obligated to take the lowest bid. That's the advantage of doing basically RFPs, RFQs, or yeah. what have you. You're actually picking the qualifications. Yeah. Uh, and actually, if you were getting a price, a separate sealed price proposal, it stays sealed until basically after uh, the evaluations uh, are done because you, you, you get to a point where you say, here's our number one choice on qualification, and then okay. they could be ten or $15,000, depending on what it is, more expensive than the next one, but you're still happy with them. Conversely, yeah. it could be $50,000 more expensive, and at that point, you might say, well, you know what? They have a better qualifications, but it's not enough to justify enough for Mm -hmm. um, I'll just toss in here that in the Williamsburg um, RFQ for fee, they just say the fee shall be negotiated by the Board of mm -hmm. Selectmen right. or the Town of Williamsburg Design of Selection. That's the other alternative. I think have, you know getting quotes is a good idea, so long as we're not obligated to take the lowest quote. If we're able to still score it, which we have to do we're individually still, anyway. Yeah, yeah, we'll still score it. And then we can Same. use the fact that um, this one, they're both equal, but this one is less expensive or whatever. Right. Yeah, we go through the same, same process. We score it as a committee, uh, and, and like I say, it's much like the Senior Center Feasibility Committee did of having two or three at the top of the list and having them in front of the, uh, the committee to do interviews and then take, taking from those interviews, having a vote for what I feel is the best uh, recommendation to take to the select board.
So under number three, schematic design plan, it says after task number two is completed, the Public Safety Building Committee and Select Board will narrow site selection down to one. And then, so that was different from the Senior Center one, um, because everything sort of rested on that decision before proceeding with anything else. Is that still what the committee wants to do? Or should I say one to two properties? <coughs> I would probably, and this is my own opinion, still head for the one. I agree. Because unlike the ad hoc senior senator feasibility study committee, this committee for public safety is also a basically a building committee uh, piece in their title to move it forward. So I would think we want to get down to one if we can. I concur with one. I think two would be confusing mm -hmm. to proceed with. I mean, at the end of the day, when the feasibility of study is done, we're going to turn it over to an architect to do actual design. We're not going to give them two properties to do design on. Right, but I think it was the schematic design mm -hmm. um, of the senior center on the fire station um, land that made it clear that the only way it's going to fit there is a two-story building. So to me, it just seems like if we're really trying to substantiate why any particular site is better over any another one, it just helped a lot to have that data available, that this is there's no way it's going to fit there because the building you know, has to be turned this way and the parking has to be higher up in the building, and so you'd have to enter through the second level I mean, there were a lot of reasons why it did, but we wouldn't have known that without a schematic design on that site. So that's the only reason. I mean, this sort of stops everything, say, okay, identify the one site and then move on. So are you proposing we should have two? I'm just asking the question because it was just very different from the senior center approach. Because task four after that is total project cost estimate and schedule. So basically, we're not going to have the data to answer some questions that might come up. So, are we going to some? Yeah, I, I don't know if we know the answer. Probably is a sort of question, but this, do they need the schematic design to determine whether it's going to have to be a two story building? They couldn't just do it from elevations? I don't know. I, mean, I would think they should be able to look at a piece of land, say it's got a good slope to it. There's no way you're going to love them out with the ledges there, like for the fire station. I mean, if they looked at this land, it would have to be a two story building for either. Hi, this is Jessica calling so you from Spectrum. We have a limited time Christmas offer going on for Spectrum Mobile. Um, that is buy one, get one free line for just $29.99. Also, you can get our internet service for just $29.99. Call the Spectrum Mobile Service Center today for once you saw what would be on one level, what would be on the other level, where the outdoor space would be, those visuals really helped us to say the two probably wouldn't work. The comparison, you need the, sketch. the comparison is what made right. it doable. Okay. Personally, I feel better if it was uh, one or two. I just feel like we have to justify why we're not using town land. I mean, mm -hmm. every time we try to conserve land in this town, every time we try to do anything that takes the land off the tax rolls. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in the audience asking why we aren't using, what are we going to do with the old police station, the car police station? What are we going to do with the old fire station? Like, yeah. What are we going to do with, yeah, I mean, it's. I agree with you. We have the history of the other complex in the feasibility study to somewhat justify that if that was the case. Right? Yeah. Because it, it indicates a two story, which would require an elevator, which requires a substantial increase in costs. Right. Um, it wasn't very feasible for the fire apparatuses to enter and exit. Mm -hmm. So you know, there, there, we do have that history of at mm -hmm. least for that lot. I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. <clears throat> well, could we expect anyone who responded to this RFQ to utilize that report as well as the data that's already been collected by Abacus's? subcontractor, engineer, whatever it was, it did the, the work. In other words, they're not going to go back to square one to create all that information. And, and thus, it's provided, we see it, we have answers when people ask the question, why can't we use when this we site? To point this out to them, 
yeah. people we hire because they're not going to know where to look until well we, we share it with them yeah yeah, yeah. Well, we did reference the website for the previous report, and we'll certainly add about the current data around the sites for the um, site evaluation. So it basically goes one, task one, space needs assessment. Basically, that's the design of the building, square footage, all that. Second one is site evaluation, and then we're talking about up to four potential properties. And then the next task is schematic design plan. And that's when they say do a schematic design for only one site. And then the next one is total project cost estimate and schedule. That's task four. Task five is projected operating cost. We're going to cut that down to one year. And then task six is options for green design. Task seven is evaluation of existing facilities in comparison to other communities. Did I mention anything about that? No. <coughs> so. I'll cut down to four for now. I'll mention about the, I'll see what it says about the website reference to the previous uh, feasibility study at the fire, current fire station site. I'll also talk about the current data that will be available for the, all the sites under consideration, engineering and environmental. And mention that it's a digital model that we're looking for and that the meetings other than the in-person town meeting will be Zoom. Anything else? Did we discuss 21E, whether we want to include that or? I'm not sure what you mean. What, what is 21E? 21E is environmental assessment of the properties. Phase one is essentially where they do research on the property, but oh, right. they usually hire an independent LSP, licensed site professional, mm -hmm. and that can be very costly. That's what the senior said. I don't know how they make it any more. I don't think they went to that. Uh, yeah, they didn't get they didn't it. Go to that degree. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah they yeah. Study. they went to the what level did they go to? Because they talked about if we wanted if we wanted to go further than what the scope of what their engineers are doing, then we would have to hire somebody on our own. So, yes, sure. Instead of asking for this to include a twenty one E, how about this company will contact DEP? and research if there's any active files on the property. This would be a preliminary 21A. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Basically, because basically, DEP is going to have the history for the last 50 years. Yeah. And if they pull that property up mm -hmm. and they say in, that, in, in reality, we can do that ourselves in 15 minutes. I, I know we can, but we're not supposed <laughs> well, to. Well, we, no. we're not supposed to, yes. really. Well. If you know what you're doing, can't we save money that way? No? I've done it many times. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because you can't put your name on it because you're not in that world um, here? I'm not sure about that. I want to make sure. It gets, it gets any awkward. Okay. And, and simply because if we, if, let's say hypothetically, I call up my friends at DEP and I say, hey, look at the, you want to look at this address and send me what you have on it? which we do all the time. Yeah. And then I come back to you just like I did with the Bruce Crooms property, and I goes, hey, uh, you might want to pay attention to this. <clears throat> and then the town decides, this committee, to start going in a different direction because of that. Hmm. Then it puts us in an awkward position. Okay. Will it work to then just say do a preliminary 21E? Is that going to satisfy uh, it? I don't know if that's a technical term. I always thought yeah. phase one was a preliminary one, phase okay, two. Okay, here's what it says. Yeah. Consultant shall consult town staff and make maximum use of available engineering and other data for the sites prior to proceeding with the assessment. Perform site analysis to include hazardous materials investigation, parentheses, 21E, phase one report for each site, parentheses, end of parentheses, and archeological, if deemed appropriate, preliminary wetlands assessment, stormwater drainage issues, location of utilities, sewer water, other but, and evaluate vehicle access. But when you read that, it says doing all this assessment for hazardous material and a 21E phase one. Mm -hmm. Well, they're two different things. I think that Francis was supposed to describe the previous ones, but now the way it's written. It's not. Yeah. So is there a better way to write it? It needs to get watered down. 
you follow what I'm thinking? That's one way, and I'm thinking another way. Yeah. And we have to be able to eliminate properties before we get to that, but saying, okay, we would like that, but on no more than two or three properties. Mm. On two principal properties. So when they finally focus down, it's just on the two principal properties. Yeah, we don't want the town buying a pig in a poke or we right. take ownership of a hazardous waste site. And they're out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would they need the information to eliminate any of the other potential sites? It'll be part of it. Because I mean, I'm just thinking if they're, if they're, I, mean, I know we've eliminated boom because of that. Well, right, but I mean, let's take, for instance, we have a manufacturing facility that we're looking at buying the land next door, so we have no idea of what they did for waste disposal during their operations over the last X amount of years. I, I, yeah, I guess my question might be simple. Is there any sites that we have on our list that we are concerned about in that way, especially? At this point, the other one I was concerned about was the Bruce Coombs one. Okay. Because for 15 minutes we could do our due diligence and then if it's not a big deal because we don't have any real yeah. forecast of a problem, I think you could reduce it down to one or two sites if that's the two sites. Well, you know? I mean the ultimate goal as I understand this is to reduce the amount of time and cost when we put this out so, and getting a decent product at the other end. And still getting a good product with all the information. Yeah. Yeah. Was that already, was that done on the last, uh, for for this site, uh, during the last process? I don't believe the 21E was done, if memory serves, <clears throat> because we were aware of the hazards at that site. Can you explain again why you said, uh, whether it was me, Mark, or Charlie, that when, when I just read that, you said, well, those are two different things. I so 21E, read it again. If you read the sentence before it where it says 21E. Yeah, it says, perform site analyses to include hazardous materials investigation, parentheses, 21E, phase one report for each site. Right, so where it says hazardous waste investigation, mm -hmm. that sounds like a full-blown 21E. Okay. Right. So if you drop that, Two, two words as their site investigation and just put 21E phase one. Okay, so get rid of hazardous materials investigation? Correct. Right. And just have it be. And take out the parentheses. Yeah. So perform site analyses to include 21E phase one report for each site and archaeological, if deemed appropriate, preliminary wetlands assessments, stormwater drainage issues, location of utilities and evaluate the vehicle ask vehicular access. John, I was just pointing out to you, I'm doing this without looking at a piece of paper or the computer. Really? Does the rest of that apply? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so that'll help with that one. Never leave me your I think I'm a little bit more comfortable with one or two sites. Me too. Yeah. Why, why do we want to say one, just say two? Two. Okay, selection of two sites, okay. And which two sites? Whatever they decide, well, two, the which ones are feasible. That'll be their process to go from the four to the two. <coughs> okay, what else? Is, is it, we can also make an assumption, Reed, correct, that this 21E is also gonna be done for the, uh, the senior center, one, right? That, that report's going to be done for the senior center as well? I don't know that we're doing a 21 year. I hope. I don't think so. Not at this phase. <laughs> no, but eventually. Oh, yeah, and but I, I think the reason I say that is if we're, we have four sites in common, and perhaps the senior center is doing two, and that's two that the public safety complex won't yeah, have. We're not doing it this phase, so. This, this, this. But Some, somewhere before anybody purchases the land, yeah, yeah. you're yeah. going to need to do a 21 Yeah. So I think answer to your question is that if it's done 
for the public safety building and ultimately is needed by the senior center, then it's done. You don't have to pay for it because it's been done. For if we it's, won't be able to have to pay for it. That's because, right. Yeah. If it was done by. Yeah. Who knows? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's during this particular study. So that wasn't done the last time you had a public safety? That was so to my knowledge, no. Because we ended up focusing on town land. So the town already owned it. I mean, if you really get down to it, when we got into this at the very beginning, we had 12 intersecting deeds on these lands. We had to clean up all those deeds first. And we had a county road going through this building that we never got officially abandoned. We had to get rid of that. So, okay. do we need to talk about any dates of different things, or do you want to just work that out? Ourselves? I'll work it out. Yeah. Okay. They, 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 they basically all work around the, the longest one to get is the uh, get it into the central register. So I work everything around. Yeah. Okay. So what I what I have so far is well, the introduction <coughs> hasn't changed, but the submission instructions, the dates will change, and also instead of seventy five thousand, it'll say that. You know, fee to be negotiated. Fee negotiated. Yes. <clears throat> um, and then, let's see, the next section is submission requirements. There aren't any changes to that other than the dates, but all the requirements of the firms and of the uh, staff are the same as what we edited last time mm -hmm. and then the dates just change again and then background of existing conditions that's unfortunately the same unless you want to add a uh, real little issue with the <laughs> no. yeah. scope of work uh, <laughs> we'll leave that as it is space needs assessment that's the same we're basically looking for design square footage site evaluation we're going to change it to four properties We've taken out the hazardous materials. Just go back yeah. quick on the uh, scope of work on number six. Uh, you have these include existing fire station, existing highway department, and up to three other vacant. Wait a minute, where is what page? On scope, on number six, scope of work. Number six. What page is that? Uh, page five. Is that another work task? No? I think it's above task. Yes, yeah, it's above task one. Oh, okay. Right above task one. Yeah, scope of work, right? And we mentioned five. Oh, five right. I'll, I'll update all that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and it, yeah. it, I'll go through and make sure it doesn't say um, anything different than what we originally said. Okay, so then we're up to uh, schematic design, total project cost estimate. It says uh, all costs related to design and construction of the building, furniture fixtures, all that. Oops. And then project projected operating costs, we're going to take out the uh, also evaluate maintenance costs, including maintenance staff will add just um, one year instead of 20. Mm -hmm. Right. And then task six, uh, options for green design. Leave that in there? I would like to see it in there. Yeah. Okay. I think we should. Yeah. And then task seven is evaluation of existing uh, facilities in comparison to other communities. I think we need that primarily for public presentation. Yeah. yeah. Should we limit it uh, to <coughs> two or something? So yeah. Here's, here's what it says. Evaluate the condition of the existing fire station, police station, and generate a list of deficiencies. Compare the existing facilities to those located in similarly sized communities. Provide the age and square footage for the facilities and other communities for comparison. So can we say two of similar size, similar populations, yeah. as opposed to open-ended like that? They might feel they need to do five, six. So the deliverable under that task is information to be included in task separate report and applicable presentation of the condition and shortfalls of the existing facilities. Report and presentation is to also include information on at least five comparable five, communities. Five, yeah. Public safety facilities in Massachusetts intent is to demonstrate the need for the new facility to educate the public on current conditions. So you want to cut that down to two? I do. Yeah, I want to cut it down two. to two. Is that okay with everybody? What do you think? 
Thanks. And I think it's going to make it difficult to get into the actual scoring piece on that if we drop it to two, but I'll have to look at it in more detail. Three? What do you mean? The score? Oh, I see what you mean. Well, you, you just like got highly advantageous, advantageous, okay, and not advantageous. That's right, but we're not asking what they've done in the past. We're asking to do something in the future. So it's this is comparing with other communities. Okay. Yeah, this is that different. Should be fine, then. Yeah, we're not asking them what have they done in the past okay. to look at other facilities. We're asking them to do that as part of the project. Yeah. And we say so, at least five, at least two, so they may give us more. Yeah. Okay, at least two? Yeah. That's good work. Okay. And then task eight is comprehensive final report and presentation. Complete the above seven tasks. Three copies of bound written. One may plan shall include the committee on two USB drives. Council of shall own the rights to any reports, plans, promotional materials produced under the scope of services. Give up to three presentations, including at town meeting. I, I think we're going to need them for more than just town meeting. We're going to need it for probably a public information section session, minimally, yeah. and up at to three. One. Yeah, at yeah. least yeah. three one. presentations, including town meeting. So there's two. Yeah. So we don't want to leave it at three. And then it says the consultant should also anticipate attending, in addition to the town meeting a minimum of five meetings with the committee or public. And, Zoom, yeah, Zoom. Uh, and then put uh, remote? Most likely remote or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Remote. Doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, Alex is a little no, bit yeah, yeah, we meeting every two weeks. I mean, they're already well yeah. past the yeah. yeah. They don't have to send an entire sure crew. They can send one or two. meeting might be appropriate. Right. Okay. And then designer qualifications are all the same. Mm -hmm. as they were, and then the scoring, I think that's probably it. So where's the piece that talks about the digital model? I didn't see that. But then the deliverables? Did you went through that already? Where were you? Because you were reading about the schematic model. Where you want to just hit search and type in model and see if it finds the word in the documents? <laughs> you, you didn't say, you said physical model on your... The little sheet here, is yeah. that the same as schematic model? No. All right, no. here's what it says, deliverables, and this is under task three. Prepare final schematic design plan and report for a public safety complex. Also develop communication tools including plans, models, color renderings, and sketches to be used right. at public right. forums. Yeah. That's where, that's, yeah. that's the problem. That, that's okay. the problem. Yeah. So, so, so what you're saying instead, and what was the... Insert the word digital before models. model. Yeah. Yeah. Just say digital models? Huh? Where it says models, please insert the word schematic in front of that. So okay, because it digital, says prepare digital, 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 digital model. Yeah, yeah digital and that model. way they're, they're uh -huh. not looking at this thinking that they're building a one room scale model. Of well, it says prepare final schematic design <coughs> plan and report for a public safety complex. Also develop communication tools including plans, digital models, color renderings, and sketches to be used at public forums and presentation at town meeting yeah. on a date yet to be determined. I'm sure the attorney read it and said this can be interpreted in two ways and therefore we're not bidding on it. Well, here's what it says at the end of this. These communication tools shall be provided to the town in a PDF format. You would think that they would understand that it's not a... I was in court today. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's okay with that, but just adding digital yeah, in front of the model? Digital. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That should work good. All right. And then total project cost and schedule. We'll update the schedule. I think everything else is the same. And then you'll have to change the dates. Did you say Yeah. That? yeah. The including the front, 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 the front, front page. page. I move that the modifications be accepted as written. I second. Member Pruden second. Any objections? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> I think you should also have a motion to um, have Edna and follow up and uh, yeah, make, 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 make the changes, changes and, and present it in front of the select board. board. For approval and then posting, right? So moved. Second. Okay. Okay, so that's for so Ed. Charlie and John. So just I want to be sure I know that motion. So it's that Ed can take these modifications yep. and present it to the select board. Reenie and Ed. Yep. Reenie oh. and Ed. Okay. Yep. Okay. Will the select board um, 
to determine the date. I think we determined the November 1st and the January 12th dates. No, why don't we, why don't we talk about that? What's, um, well, that call's driven by when it can have posted. Right. And then that's just going to be the catalyst that's going right, to right, all the right, way right. through this. Right. So okay. it's going to fall back to Evan. Right. I think we had a pretty li liberal time the second time around. And mm -hmm. now that I know that there was more dollars and cents than timeline that probably played into this, Yeah. I might even stick with those or only right. add a few weeks to it rather than months. So. Yeah, let me see what our little chart Did you say says there was that. like 17 firms that requested applications the first time around? And you got zero. Eight, yeah, well, I've had so many that I get the projects mixed up, but I think 17 was the current for RFQ number two for public safety. So it's just interesting to me that only one firm had the courtesy to call you up and say, let me tell you what's going on here and why we, you know, get coming up with these bullet points. You know, maybe it's, I, maybe I, I shouldn't I, be surprised. I am left of anonymous, but the firm, shall we say, I won't say has a tie, but has a current working relationship with this town of Southampton. So I think they were concerned and wanted to let us know. Oh. <coughs> do you want to look at any dates now? Or do you want me to just give this back to you with some edits and let you put on dates? Let me figure it out. Yeah, okay. let me wrap my head around the dates. OK. Like I say, I don't think I'm going to add more than probably three weeks to the end due, due dates just because of it, I think it was ample and know that we know it's dollars and cents. It's all going to be the upfront. And like I said, once, once it has the approval of the select board, it can be published to convoy, convoy is instantaneously. I can <coughs> do a legal ad and send it to Gazette and it goes in within three days. The longest little weirdity is. Um, the central register because, and I, I believe it's, it's got to be in by Wednesday at noon to show up the following Wednesday or Thursday in the publication. So it, it can, if if you just miss it, all of a sudden you've got like a three week delay type of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, I'll make the changes on this, and I'll probably send it to you tonight because I. Can't do anything tomorrow. Okay. Um, and I also, uh, I'm going to ask the chair of the select board to send a letter out now that both committees have voted not to move forward in any way with the Coombs property, even though the letter from him came into Darcy Gasparini, who was a member of the senior center. I think it should come from the select board probably to just say. It's I was going to ask more night too. So, so and this committee already voted, right, to not pursue that particular property that last meeting. So, um, and so has the senior center. So we'll do that, and I'll ask Chris to send a letter out. And then as far as the funds, I don't know, I think I'll just mention that as of right now, we anticipate that's the problem with not getting. So we will likely come back and request ARPA funds, but right. we'll also look for other funding. I don't know. Right. And the town administrator just saved the ARPA funds, $24,000 by that uh, compact that he Oh, right. Compact best practices that we're moving the classification oh, right, 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 right. so that you know there's twenty four thousand theoretically that was allocated somewhere that I would think can get moved over fairly easily. Okay. Without taking, shall we say, monies that haven't been allocated. Anymore. Well, I'll uh, I'll just mention that we anticipate possibly uh, requesting an additional fifty to seventy five thousand, which would be one hundred seventy five to two hundred. Um, and ask if the select board is comfortable encumbering that amount so we don't overspend the ARPA funds. Yeah. So is it, I, is that, is the committee good with that? Yes. Yes. I mean, it seems like it's the most readable, the accessible funds. It's literally already in the bank. I mean, we can certainly look for additional funding, um, but it seems like a logical place for it to come from on short notice. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Do you think we should vote about that or just? I would vote on it. Yeah, okay, good. Anything with money, I think we probably should. So if somebody wants to make a motion to that effect. So I move that Rini present to the select board the issue of the funding for the feasibility study and request that um, 
an additional to fifty to seventy five thousand may be necessary in order to meet the needs of the potential bidders. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there a second? Charlie. No, John. John. <laughs> Motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Anything else on this? Um, any other <laughs> issues? Yes, Ted. And this isn't going to affect the Public Safety Building Committee, at least at this point in time, but as long as the Chair of the Senior Center Feasibility Study Committee is here. Um, I have become aware that there is probably going to be a housing project come forward in the future at Zero College Highway. Um, the parcel that was offered in donation for the Public Safety Building Committee uh, is carved out still for that. Um, so the I would say if the Senior Center Feasibility Committee were interested in that parcel to also house a complex um, for the senior center, we may want to have some conversations with advocates and the property owner. So at the last meeting, they did present uh, all of the properties and the schematic design on all the remaining properties and the area where they had put the, um, the senior center was not unanimously supported by the committee um, because it was the furthest north on a pretty bad curve with uh, access to College Highway. So as an alternative, there was a lot that was on the proposed new road going in towards the property, a lot that um, the committee wanted to propose as an additional possible alternative. So. That's where that stands as far as the senior center, but I don't think there's been any communication back to any landowner because it hasn't gotten to that point yet. But that was what the committee had asked whether or not we can request that either that other one or perhaps even another one because it would be very difficult for seniors to pull off of College Highway onto that furthest quote commercial lot. And it's a better size than the other commercial lots, but. If we, if we can be back in, like right across from the public safety, you know, um, the inner part of that. Right. Yeah, the inner part of that road. Yeah. I don't know where, again, I, and um, it's been mentioned to me before that they were looking at potentially senior housing there. I don't know if it's still what they're talking mm -hmm. about. But it might be worth our while to take a vote to actually contact the property owner and say, senior center, is looking for three to four acres to do this. Do you have a preferential area if that were the case? Yeah, I mean, he was very clear with us when we met with him that show us where, what we want, you know, and he'll try to work with us. So if we get the schematic back from Abacus on that inner property, then that, at that time we would share that. Because he seemed to be very flexible when we spoke to him, or when Abacus, I think, spoke to him. Confusing when we met with him on the property or when Abacus, but he seemed open at that time. So. Yeah, I know, okay. I, I, the uh, uh, candidate come to me with plans to see if I had any fire department concerns, and it looked like they were proposing area down further back, further back, yeah. which seemed pretty ideal because you're it's not near the road, but you're closer to the bike trail. So, mm -hmm. seems, I don't know. Yeah, I think if we once we get that schematic from um, Abacus, we can share that with the Breeze. So. Yeah. I wanted to mention another thing. I was asked last time to contact Barbara Samborski, mm -hmm. and uh, she said that she was still interested in being part of the committee, but she wasn't able to attend the Thursday night meeting, which was then canceled because of the weather. She did come to the select board meeting, the last meeting, and stayed for like two or three hours through the meeting. Um, so I don't know what, you know, 
it's just a difficult situation. She wants to be involved, but then the attendance isn't very good. So um, I'm not sure at this point. You want me to swing back to John Lumbra? I think probably I'll mention that at the meeting also that maybe John can bring it to the Finance Committee. There's three other members there, and maybe they can discuss representation of finance in this committee and let them decide how they want to proceed, OK? okay. I, I will say that the response Rini got contacting Barb was exactly the response I got three times, you know, so yeah, she's yeah. Same thing. a challenge for her, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so dates? A date for the next meeting. Uh, just real quickly, I think on the agenda, just to make sure we follow the process, we had, the agenda was to propose a, a site visit with Hadley, but I think we'll discuss that at the next meeting where yeah. a little bit over on time. Yeah, there's no rush. Is our next meeting the combined meeting, or are we meeting before them? Um, good question. That's only yeah. nine days away. Oh, right. We, yeah. Is there yeah. anything to discuss? Yeah, February, February 9th, but if, even if it's not before then, we can set the next regular. Yeah, yeah okay, that would be helpful, actually. So if we meet, well, we have no idea. Well, I mean, the RFQ is going to go out one way or another. So, should we meet again like the, well, President's Day is the 20th, the office, the building's closed, right? Correct. Right. So either before or after that, but before would be literally just days after the 9th. So should we just say the 27th? The next. Why don't we just roll it into March? Because there's nothing that I can see is going to be going on. Yeah. Our kids going to go out, but I mean, mm -hmm. So there won't be anything to discuss until March. That's what you're saying. Well, the only only thing is, why don't you put, why don't you go for a tentative one on the 27th? It's 27. Once I know the actual dates, there's going to be a deadline for questions, which the committee is going to have to answer. So if that deadline be fell before the 27th, I probably suggest that you meet on the 27th. Yeah. But I, I can shoot an email off. Once I definitely know what those plug dates are. Well, we are. can plug the day in. I mean, I always change it afterwards. Yeah. Okay. I mean, for I, now, we'll see the 27th at 4.30? 4.30. Mm -hmm. And then, but, but the 9th yeah, by if, Zoom. Yeah, and if not, it'll be the weekend after. And that'll be noon time at Zoom. Uh, 9 at noon by Zoom. <laughs> can't talk at Zoom by noon. Oh. <laughs> and set, um, I move to adjourn. Adjourn. Seconded. Second. First and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? <laughs> Thank you. No. <laughs>